All right, let's move on to the next story, which is uh, about my crazy California. Now, the funny thing here, of course, is that I, as people know, I'm in Los Angeles. Uh, Liz, you fled California. Alex, you told me right before you started, you're, you're coming back. So first off, are you nuts I, before I even get to the story? I, no, no, I'm in love is the issue. No, I've got to, I'm following my wife out there. But it's amazing because I'm sure the U-Haul, I'll be going in one direction, seeing all the... <laughs> Trucks going in the other direction towards the same parts of the country. No, it's nuts. But I, you know, I've always lived this way. I'm from LA. I've been in DC for eight years and I went to Berkeley. So I've always enjoyed kind of being inside the belly of the beast and, you know, heading back to Garcetti's LA and Newsom's California. I'm sure it's going to fit the Breitbart editor in chief's persona perfectly. That's funny. You're literally the one guy who's going to replenish the U-Haul stock in California as everybody's moving them across the country. So the story right. that I want to cover, we're going to show the tweet right now. Gavin Newsom, our insane evil Disney cartoon character of a governor who is being recalled, uh, well, he is launching a $116.5 million giveaway for vaccinated Californians, exclamation point. 15 million in cash prizes for 10 winners selected on June 15th. 50K for winners on June uh, 4th and June 11th. And if you're already vaccinated, you're entered. Not vaccinated, next 2 million that get fully vaccinated can also get a $50 card. Let's do this, California. Vax for the win. Uh, so my question to you first, Liz, since you did flee California, is this idiocracy? Are we actually in idiocracy right now where if you get vaccinated, you get a $50 card and a lottery ticket? I mean, is that is that why you fled? No, it isn't. In fact, I will be honest here, and I have a little buyer's remorse about leaving California because California is paradise. The liberal policies are insane, but we shouldn't actually write off California and just leave. We should fight for it. We didn't leave California just because of the liberal policies. We left for job reasons, um, and I do miss it, and I, I hope that people stay and fight because it is a lovely a lovely, lovely state, and it's worth fighting for. That's the first thing. The second thing is, how is it even legal? And I've, I've been doing research on this. How is it even legal for the government to pay people to take an experimental vaccine? I, I just am fundamentally against the idea of a government and politicians trying to encourage people to take medical treatments that haven't really been studied. You can offer it, and that's great. But beyond that, it's simply none of your business. And it shows the disconnect between the elites, I think, and the American people, that if the American people wanted to get vaccinated, they they would. If they believed politicians' rhetoric on COVID-19, then that then that's fine. But that you can see this disconnect because you shouldn't have to pay people to do this if they truly believe it's necessary. Kevin, is that the key point that the yeah. professional class has just ruined themselves to the point that if we're in the worst pandemic in modern times, they can't even get people to take the vaccine without giving them a $50 gift card? Yeah, and I think we've reached the point where people who don't have the vaccine are looking at everyone who does saying, What's the big push to get me to get it? Everyone has had a chance. There's no longer being denied to anyone. If you're scared of it, you have it and you're safe from me. If you're that scared of me, why do you care anymore if I get it? Because we're at that point where anyone could have gotten it. So there's no excuse for someone to be going around terrified of unvaccinated people mm -hmm. because they can go get the vaccine themselves and they can assuage themselves or remove themselves of any fear they might have. The other really interesting part of this, that tweet, he says, if you have the vaccine, you've already been entered. When I hear that, I start wait thinking, well, wait a second. How, <laughs> I thought you guys weren't tracking on some big database of everyone who's got the vaccine. How Whoa. did you enter everyone into this if they got the vaccine? I think a lot of people overlook that part. I wanna talk more about that. Yeah, that's a great point, actually. We're told that if you show an ID to go vote, somehow that's racist, but they're gonna track you if you've taken the vaccine and then they might give you some cash Marlo, you gonna get in on this? You want some of that uh, Newsome money? Okay, for, first of all, if the vaccine is so amazing, why is Joe Biden still wearing his mask alone outside after he got it? That's very bad vaccine messaging, well, Joe. Take the mask off outdoors. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a fair point, but Jill's doing it too. And I'm told she's the best doctor who's ever existed. So that's, that's a big deal. 
Uh, but in all honesty, the thing that offends me the most about this is that this is taxpayer money. Uh, what right does Gavin Newsom have, Mr. French Laundry guy, uh, Mr. White Truffle guy? What does he have to do with the taxpayer's money? And he's saying he's going to pay random people because they're getting injected with the FDA's uh, not approved yet serum. I mean, it's unbelievable. Even if you love the vaccine, the thought that this is where taxpayer money is going at all. And who's fence sitting on the vaccine anyway? Don't we have enough information to make up our mind? It's so infantilizing, but that's what the California super state does. So Liz, because you left, and as you said, it was for, for work purposes and you, and you miss California. I mean, I see this stuff and I'm with Alex. I'm just like, cause every day now, now that Newsom knows he's getting recalled every day, he's got a new government program and 4 billion for this and 87 trillion for this. And he's just making, you know, they all make up numbers and it's a one party state and all of that stuff. But do you honestly think it could be turned around? Like when you see someone like me, that's trying to stay and fight, you don't think I'm completely insane? Well, I didn't say I didn't think you were completely insane, Dave. Let's not conflate the two things. <laughs> I, was just, I, was I think you better hold on to your yeah. wallet is what I think you better do until Newsom is recalled because he's just trying to empty that. He's trying to dip his hands into your wallet and take everything that's uh, in there. I, I do actually believe that there's hope even for liberal states. I actually don't subscribe to the viewpoint that deep blue states or deep red states stay that color. If you look at the electoral history of our country, swing states constantly change. California used to be Republican. Mm -hmm. Now it's Democrat. You know, Texas might turn blue. God forbid they might it might turn blue. There's a ton of examples of states that were once red and have turned blue and were once blue and have turned red. So it can always be saved. You just have to find out what's important to people, how government officials are preventing what's important from people from taking place and then tell the people that the government officials are doing that. And that changes people's minds when they're impacted personally. Cabot, you uh, Dave, left, can I you ask left you, DC, uh, right? Well, uh, Marla, yeah, go ahead, Alex. Yeah, yeah, Dave, Dave, what what party are you going to declare for when you jump in here in the governor's race? You know, I have had so many people in the last couple of weeks ask me and offer me money to run, like they'll back me and, and the whole thing. And it's like, the problem is, even if I was crazy enough to do it, even if I was just like, yes, I will actually do it, it's such a deeply corrupt one party state that even if, even if I felt I could get enough votes, and actually I do think there are enough blue people here who have been mugged by reality, and now we're basically what I would say are kind of new school conservatives, which I would include all of us in. I, I just think the state is just so deeply corrupt in Brooklyn. But by the way, Rick Rennell, who I'm sure you guys all know, uh, Rick is working on fixing some of the, the voter uh, lists here. So, uh, you know, I don't know. I don't know. I tried uh, to put pressure on him too the other day. I texted him and I was like, are you gonna tell me when you're gonna announce? When is that gonna be? When is it gonna be? And I would <laughs> say, Dave, one- I spoke one to him this morning. Dave. I don't wanna say too much. Cabot, go ahead. Dave, one plan for you. Maybe you say everyone's offering money to help the campaign. Maybe just say, I'm gonna launch an exploratory committee. Uh, yes. Maybe <laughs> get some of the money in there and then and wink, then, wink, and then decide afterwards, maybe not to run. I could just take that money and put a down payment on a house in Florida. It's not a bad idea, Phillips, I like yeah. it. But can you talk about, because you, you were a DC guy, right? And yeah. you just moved now to Tennessee because obviously the Daily Wire fled Los Angeles and they're in Tennessee. Yeah. Can you talk a little bit about just culturally what it's been like. I was in, I saw you in Tennessee a couple weeks ago in Nashville and it felt so profoundly different to me to be a going from a blue state to a red state. It's the first place I think that a lot of us have lived where it doesn't feel like it's the, we're swimming upstream against the culture. It actually feels like the culture is going with us. The governor of Tennessee just passed a bill banning critical race theory in schools. They just passed constitutional carry. They just said you can't require vaccine passports. There are all these things that are happening where I'm actually looking at the local government saying, wait a second, that's a positive thing. I like that. And I think there are gonna be more and more people that are attracted to that. Tennessee is having a boom right now of people coming here because there's no state income tax. There are so fewer regulations for people looking to start businesses. Real estate's actually affordable. And I do think that there is gonna be an exodus from the big cities, we're already seeing it, but not to, not to put my boomer hat on, but really truly, cities I think are, we're, we're gonna look back at this period of American history where all these people just crammed into big cities and people are gonna laugh there because cities are only going to get worse because they're only going to continue to be run by Democrats until people wake up. And I think what's happening in Tennessee is kind of an example where people are flooding here by the thousands every single week because of the freedom it offers. And I, again, cities, I think, are the, the kind of the way of the past. Sorry for anyone living in a big city. Yeah, well, cough, to, cough, Dave. to Liz's point, though, you know, what happens is the Democrats come in, they wreck all of yeah. these cities. I mean, Portland, Seattle, San Francisco, Los Angeles, you guys know all of it. And then what happens? Conservatives come in and fix it. I mean, Giuliani fixed a disaster in New York City by Dinkins, who was a progressive, and now the progressives, de Blasio, are, are ruining it again.